Everybody. Actually, it's not the new year for me yet. I'm filming this video a week or so in advance. I'm just pretending it's the new year, but by the time you watch this, it will be the new year. It should be the new year, unless anything particularly apocalyptic has happened. Anyway, it is customary for my first video of the new year to be about practicing and about goal setting, that kind of thing. And I'm naturally quite suspicious of all this vacuous self-help, self-improvement stuff you get all over the internet at this time of year. But uh, this is simply about having some kind of idea about where you want to get to guitar-wise over the next 12 months and having some kind of plan to help you get there. And I think that's reasonable enough. And if you don't step back from time to time and give this kind of thing some thought, then you might still have fun. You might still make a little bit of progress. But ultimately, I think you end up wasting a lot of time. It becomes frustrating and you just get annoyed at your slow progress. So in this video I want to give you some general thoughts on practicing and I also thought that this year it might be interesting for me to show you how these general principles translate into my own personal goals and practice plan and of course your own practice plan doesn't have to look exactly like mine it will likely look very different but hopefully it will give you a bit of inspiration and uh, inevitably this video is going to be quite a talky video but I think this stuff is worth discussing and the rest of the videos this year are going to be me playing and making music. Let's talk about fundamentals then and consider why we're even practicing in the first place when practice let's face it can be hard work it can be tedious it can be boring and there have actually been some quite prolonged periods in my playing career where I've done no organized practice whatsoever I've been happy just playing the guitar playing in bands and that kind of thing. But whenever I have done that, eventually I've become unhappy with my playing. I found that I was always playing the same stuff. I felt like I was stagnating and not moving forward. And I think the main answer to the question why I practice is that I do like that feeling of moving forward and feeling like I'm learning more about the instrument, that I'm becoming a better musician. And I think that's the main motivation for most people. It's nice to feel like you're moving forward and you're actually going somewhere rather than just stuck playing the same old thing. Beyond that, there might well be some more specific reasons why you're practicing. So perhaps you want to get your playing up to the kind of level where you're comfortable playing with friends or you want to get into a band. Uh, maybe you're writing music and you want to be able to get your chops in shape so that you can record the kind of sounds that you're hearing in your head. Uh, you know, maybe you want to go on social media and impress people with your guitar prowess. Um, and you know, all of those perfectly valid reasons, actually. I'm not gonna judge anybody. I mean, actually playing guitar, quite a big part of it is impressing people and attempting to, uh, to look cool. So uh, all of that perfectly valid. But I think it is important to consider why you're practicing because that's going to shape the specifics of your practice routine. So we're in agreement that we want to get better at this instrument, but how are we going to do that? And what exactly are we going to practice? And this is a huge topic and there's so much stuff to potentially work on and it's impossible to do everything. And I think it's always been the case that to become an accomplished guitar player, there's always been a ton of work that you have to do. But these days, I think it seems more overwhelming than ever when there's so much information out there and so many really, really good players out there as well. And in the past, I have tried to do everything and learn everything at the same time, work on all these different styles at once. But it always ended up being quite depressing when inevitably I fell short. So I think it's really important that you clarify what you need to work on, what you should be working on right now, what you can leave until later, what isn't worth working on at all. So I'm just going to give you a few thoughts on that and give you some specific practice ideas if you're a beginner or if you're an intermediate player or an advanced player. And if you're a beginner, it's actually quite easy to know what you should be working on. 
and different teachers will have different methods and a slightly different emphasis but I think there's fairly widespread agreement on the kind of stuff that is important and it's the kind of stuff that I've covered in my now slightly aging beginners course so for me the priorities should be open chords and strumming and rhythm and then maybe learning some simple scales doing some basic improvisation like the kind of things that I cover in my guitar soloing course and of course on top of that learning lots of music learning lots of songs and likewise if you're a late beginner or more of an intermediate player there's a fairly clear set of stuff that I think you should be working on so that would include things like bar chords learning about seventh chords continuing to work on your feel and your rhythm learning some more advanced scales maybe the caged system and maybe delving into some specific styles so things like blues or uh, a rock or whatever it might be now if you're an advanced player this is where it gets more difficult and it can be very hard to know what you should be working on if you find yourself in that kind of a place and this is really where you need to think about what kind of player you want to be because as I already said it's impossible to do everything so you really need to think about you know, where you want to get to on the instrument and then shape your practice routine accordingly and you can obviously keep on moving forward you can be working on harder stuff so whether it's harder stuff technically or rhythmically or theoretically and you might also like to delve into some specific styles more deeply so go wherever your own tastes lead you it might be more advanced jazz guitar stuff it might be finger style it might be flamenco whatever it is but you're just getting into this one style and really seeing how far you can take it and I think you also want to be thinking about finding your own voice and your own style on the instrument and this can be a very difficult thing it does take a lot of time and experimentation and thought but if you are an advanced player that's certainly something that you should be thinking about rather than just you know, trying to play like somebody else so what am I going to be working on this year and my number one priority is to be creative and to write music and to write songs and this is something that I haven't done that much of over the past few years just because I've been so busy with this channel but I have started writing a little bit of stuff recently and I want that process to continue this year and I've got no specific aims in mind with this I just want to accumulate material and maybe an album or two will come out of it but uh, I wouldn't class this as guitar practice so uh, as far as actual guitar practice stuff uh, I thought I might work on the following things one thing I'm going to be working on is my technique and particularly my picking technique and I think I've got a fairly realistic assessment of where my technique is currently at and uh, my picking technique isn't too bad but there are certainly plenty of players who can play faster and with more accuracy and with more fluency so it's certainly something that I think I could improve so I might start by revisiting some of my favorite technique exercises and I've got a massive folder of stuff on my computer full of technical exercises that I've collected over the years so I might go over some of those and it will be things like uh, interval exercises I've done a video on these I'll, I'll link to that above this video but things like taking a scale and playing it through in thirds fourths fifths that kind of thing so <laughs> just an A harmonic minor scale in thirds but you could take whatever scale type you like and then do thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths. It's a challenging picking exercise but it's also quite musical. You can use this stuff in improvisations and when you're writing melodies. Another favourite exercise is taking a major scale for example and playing the arpeggios, the diatonic arpeggios from that scale. So something like this. <laughs> quite challenging exercise that's also very musical but beyond exercises I also want to be playing some interesting music which is technically challenging I think uh, exercises have their place but always better to be working on actual music so I'm trying to think of some good pieces of music that are also technically demanding and good picking studies so uh, let me know if you've got any suggestions here but I'm thinking I might do things like you know, learn some bebop heads learn some Charlie Parker 
maybe I will learn some Bach on the guitar or play a, a Django Reinhardt solo or maybe I'll even revisit some of my old sort of shred metal things and learn some of those whittly solos. One thing that I always work on, something that I highly recommend that you work on, is some form of improvisation and you can do this in whatever style you fancy but personally I'm going to be working on my jazz improvisation and I've said before that I'm not a jazz player by any stretch of the imagination but it is a style that I enjoy working on it's really challenging and you really need to be sort of on top of everything guitar wise you need to know your theory you need technique you need fretboard knowledge and it all comes together when you're improvising and I've got a list of 50 or so jazz classics jazz standards which I, I kind of half know but I've never really learned them thoroughly so I'm going to really try and learn these learn the changes and the melodies, memorise all of that stuff and I'd like to be able to semi-competently improvise over all of these as well and what I'll probably do is just put on the recording or quite often I use the iReal book just to give me some backing tracks, it's a little bit cheesy but it's a nice convenient way to practice. <laughs> chorus of Take the A Train and I hope I haven't offended too many proper jazz players with that but actually that rendition was better than I thought it was going to be but still a lot to improve. I'd love to improve my fluency with jazz. I still have to concentrate quite hard whenever I'm playing over changes like that so I'd love to just be able to relax with it. I'd like to be less reliant on stock phrases and devices and I just want to work on being able to hear stuff and then translate that onto the fretboard in a fluent way. I'm going to be working on my fingerstyle playing and I think at the moment I'm an okay fingerstyle player, I can do the folky stuff fairly well but when it comes to more advanced finger style playing I'm not really as fluent as I would like to be so that's certainly something that I'm going to be working on. I'm going to be trying to get more used to using this thumb pick as well which is still something I'm not totally comfortable with and like with the technical stuff I'm just on the lookout for good finger style pieces that are going to be interesting and that are going to challenge me so again if you've got any suggestions let me know but I'm thinking that I might work on things like maybe some John Renborn he's one of my favorite folk fingerstyle players. I've got a lot into Bert Jansch and learned quite a few of his pieces but never done the same thing with Renborn so I might do some of that and I might look at some more advanced bluesy players as well maybe something like Doc Watson I've always found he's playing really interesting and really challenging and if I do succeed in getting some of this stuff together then I'm sure a video tutorial will materialize on one or two of these songs and as I mentioned earlier if you are an advanced player and I suppose I should class myself as an advanced player even though I feel most of the time like an eternal beginner um, if you are an advanced player then it's a good idea to look at specific styles and really get deeply into them so I was just thinking about specific guitar styles that I enjoy that I've not really explored properly yet and one of them that sprung to mind was gypsy jazz and it's something that I've really enjoyed listening to I've learned one or two Django things but uh, there's a whole world there to be explored and there are lots of very specific technical and musical devices that you hear in that style which I've long wanted to explore so that's something that I'm going to try and get into and I've got a handful of gypsy jazz books I'm probably going to try transcribing some Django but uh, if any of you are gypsy jazzers let me know if there are any good online resources for learning gypsy jazz and that's something I might get into this year and one final thing that I want to work on this year is being me 
and I want to continue to develop my own style. I think I have got my own style to some extent. It might not always be apparent in these YouTube videos where I'm very often trying to play like somebody else. But when I'm playing my own music, um, you know, I really want to cultivate what is unique about the way that I play the instrument. And I certainly think that this is something that you should be working on as well. Everybody is capable of saying something interesting and unique on the instrument. And this is something that I spoke about last year. Again, I'll link to that video up above. And there are some specific things you can do to cultivate that uniqueness. But I think for the most part, it's not something you can practice. It's more just a mental shift that you need to make. And it's about being observant and recognizing when you're doing something interesting and latching onto that and resisting the temptation just to play the same licks, the same ideas as everybody else. So I hope this video has given you some ideas and inspiration for your own practice. And I wish you all the best with your guitar playing in 2023. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you for many more videos this year.